Lightning is a way that the static charges release into the built-up energy formed inside clouds. The static charges are released with a very bright flash and a loud band. It was Benjamin Franklin, an American inventor, who demonstrated that lightning was a much larger performance of static electricity. The behavior of lightning is very complicated. Over the years researchers have tried to unlock its secrets. Air movement at different temperatures can create the formation of electric charges. These charges are formed when water droplets and ice crystals rub against each other inside the cloud. When the electric charges reach a certain peak, the opposite charges rush to meet each other. Jumping from cloud to cloud or from the floor to the ground. The electric charges are actually tearing through the atoms and molecules of air. This results in a loud band, with a very bright flash. Once all of the opposite electric charges have rushed together, the atoms all become neutral, having no charge. When electric charges move about in different objects or materials and the electrons are forcibly taken away from a neutral object and given to another object, the electrons have gained potential energy. When electrons leave the atoms of these objects, they are attracted by the positive charges that remains behind. The atoms themselves are positively charged. If some electrons try to transfer back to the same atom, they repel addition electrons that are about the atoms. Likewise, there is a potential energy difference between the electrons of the atoms. The potential energy difference is simplified by saying that a potential difference exists between these charge atoms or objects. Potential difference is measured in a unit called the volt. This term is derived from the inventor of the voltaic cell, which will be discussed later on in this session. Sometimes we may think that the volt is a measure of the electrical pressure or electromotive force, pushing electrons. However, it is actually a measurement of potential energy difference between two points. It is very difficult to predict or prevent lightning strikes. The only protection is to provide an easy path to ground. This is done using an apparatus called a lightning rod. A lightning rod is a sharply pointed piece of metal used to protect buildings from lightning damage. The rod is mounted at the highest point of any building, tower, or pole. It is connected to ground. If lightning hits, it is diverted to ground. Lightning rods are made in many different shapes and sizes. The picture below shows several different types. Lightning strikes cannot be predicted. Lightning rods mounted on the highest part of roofs provide some protection against lightning strikes. Lightning rods are also placed high above hydro lines as well as on very high buildings. These rods are again well grounded to provide an easy path to ground. It should also be understood that even when lightning protection, the voltages created can be deadly and destructive. The sudden excessive flow of electrons referred to as electric current from one object or body creates nothing but havoc. Another form of protection is the lightning arrestor. The function of the arrestor is to pass abnormal or over voltages to a well-grounded wire. There are numerous types, with many different specifications and mountings. Here we see various lightning and surge protectors in a small electric substation. Some of the various types are shown below. The surge arrestor, under normal condition is an insulator. It has no effect on the operation of an electric system. When the system is subjected to a high voltage surge, the arrestor offers a low resistance path that drains the high voltage to ground. After the arrestor drains the high voltage to ground, it and again becomes an insulator. Arrestors should be used on incoming, ungrounded, high voltage supply lines. The arrestor is normally connected to the line via its top connector with a ground wire attached to the arrestor's bottom connection. Basically, most of the arrestors that are used in lightning protection have the same principle of operation. The two most common arrestors are the valve type and the expulsion type. The valve type arrestor is contained in a porcelain body, it consists of the following internal parts. The lead terminal, connected to the supply. The gap unit and pre-ionizing tip. The magnetic coil and the bypass gap unit. Gap unit and ionizing unit. Thyrite valve element and a lead terminal connected to ground. The valve type arrestor is made up of a series of small air gaps and current limiting elements. The smaller gaps interrupt small current, such as a system fault surge current. The valve element offers a high opposition or resistance to the system current and little opposition to lightning surge currents. 
In its normal operation the high voltages are caused by lightning sparking or arcing over the gap and the high current, which flows for a short time, drains to the grounded wire at the arrestor. The repulsion arrestor is designed to take advantage of the heat generated by the current. The heat generates conducting gases inside the chambers of the arrestor's bod, which expels outward through the bottom of the arrestor. The gas aids the air gap in stopping line current to ground. In order to fully understand static electricity and its other uses, we have to further expand on other forms of electricity that flow along wires. Earlier on in this session, it was discussed that when electrons orbit the nucleus of various types of atoms, that they had a tendency to break free and wander away from the atoms. These types of atoms are referred to as free electrons. A continuous flow of these electrons create electric current. Some materials, such as copper, can easily cause this condition to exist. The atom's nucleus, in the copper atom, have limited control over the electrons that orbit its outer regions. The copper's atom's outer shell electrons are shielded from the positive nucleus by one or more of the inner shell's electrons. Elements with similar arrangements in its outer regions are called metals. One or more of the outermost electrons are easily free to wander, provided another electron is also free from a nearby atom. To replace one that left, the first atom and so on, these types of elementals are generally referred to as good carriers or good conductors of electricity. The electrons that travel through such apparatus or wires are actually being hardest s and controlled to operate as we need. However, in order to do this, we need a continuous flow of electrons. One of the earliest ways to create a continuous flow of electrons, later referred as electric current, was an electric cell. The cell depended on a chemical reaction to create electron movement. In the early 1800, Alessandro Volta, experimented with electric charges. He discovered that if two different metals were separated and moistened in various chemicals, electric current was produced. This was seen as sparks. This was the first battery. The chemical reaction between the brine solution and the zinc and copper plates caused electrons to flow, producing electric current. The battery was called the voltaic pile. Basically, the cell's operation depended on two dissimilar metals, zinc and copper which are immersed in a chemical solution called an electrolyte. The electrolyte used in this animation is a copper sulfate solution. The copper plate is the positive lead or anode, and the zinc plate is the negative lead or cathode. The zinc plate begins to dissolve in the electrolyte which contain copper positive ions and sulfate negative ions. The copper form positively charges ions. The zinc plate dissolves at a greater rate than the copper plate. This results in the formation of excessive electrons at the cell's cathode. Short-circuiting the external leads causes an electric current to flow. Electrons leaves the cathode retiring to the anode, through the leads. Electrons returning to the anode jump off the plate onto the copper ions, in the solution, turning them into plain copper atoms. If there is a continuous current flow, the zinc cathode dissolves changing into zinc ions. The copper anode collects more copper metal on its surface. The anode surface is where the ions pick up the free electrons changing into atoms. This type of cell produces about 1,2 volts, since it uses up its active, the cell is called a primary cell, meaning that it cannot be recharged. This concludes this video, watch for more and refer to our technical books 1 through 5 for repair procedures and techniques. Email us at twmenterprises at roger.com or visit our website at twmmediaservices.com. The books and DVDs can be purchased online through Amazon.ca.